No application. Hi, SNL. Please let me on. JK. Okay. So, hi, welcome, folks. In this in this session, we are going to be talking for about a half hour ish or so about being funny in debate. I am Ryan. I live by many life. Oh, hang on. I need to get rid of a stupid slide on my presentation because it was going to say that I have several life rules, but I don't have those life rules anymore because this morning someone in my group broke one of the life rules. So, anyways. Whoever it was in my group, you know who you are. All right, so here we go. Let, let, let's get rolling. Humor and debate. Okay, uh, hi, I'm Ryan Lafferty. I define myself as an aspiring meme lord. I, I say aspiring because I still have yet to develop a original meme template that I really like. But when I eventually do, I'll alert all of you. I'll also alert the press and you can expect a front page cover in the New York Times. It'll be very exciting. We're going to chat about four things today. Five of you include the Q&A, but I don't. Maybe six, because Q and A are different letters. So six things. We're going to talk about why humor is cool, how to do humor, warnings about humor, and then we're also going to talk about memes, because memes are so good, and we should definitely do them. A few quick overviews before we get started. The first thing I'm just going to say is that this is like a half hour. I would love for this to be like a half year, because I think it would be very funny if we just talked about being funny for like a half year. But alas, I only have like a half an hour. So uh, if you want to like talk with me in, in office hours or whatever about that, you can do that. Secondly, uh, how do I say this in the gentlest way? I'm going to avoid using profanity. In case I use some low intensity profanities, it's just part of the humor stick. So you've been officially warned, but I don't think so. So, you know, Woohoo, freedom of speech. Yay, hurrah, hurrah. Because I'm an American and I'm freaking free, people. JK, I'm not really a big American patriot. Okay, we're going to get started. Why is humor cool? Let me give you a few historical examples of how powerful humor is. Anyone know who the Stasi were? Anyone know who these were? Anyone, anyone, anyone want to shout it out? Anyone know who the Stasi were? Yeah, they were the East German secret police and they were so well known for being so effective, they would employ knock knock jokes on activists. And then the activists would just like totally fall for them. And then boom, the Supreme Court everyone's most powerful institution in America, is actually a joke. It was originally meant to just be a bunch of people who would dress up as Jedis, and then somehow they were given a shitload of power to like make laws and stuff. The Declaration of Independence, it was written as a meme when all the founding fathers got really, really drunk and thought it would be hysterical if they were like, ha, screw you, Britain. And then many years later, Len Manuel Miranda wrote a uh, series of, of fun songs about them. So long story short is humor is very cool. But why is humor very cool specifically in the context of debate and not just Eastern European secret police forces? Um, the first reason is bluntly that, how do I put this gently? NYPDL judges, if any of you are watching this, I do love you dearly. You are wonderful human beings and you have a genuinely special place in my heart. But human beings have the attention span roughly of a dolphin. And that bluntly is an insult to dolphins because humans are like, we have like really bad attention spans. But oh, look at this Coca Cola. Okay. The point is, people's attention spans are like so short. Okay. And I'm going to be really honest, guys. I'm going to be really honest. No one, no one, on planet Earth, genuinely, genuinely thinks it's fun to sit through a 48 minute long debate with like sophomores in high school talking about tax policy. I'm sorry you can sue me, but actually no one on Earth thinks this is entertaining. And so if you just spend 48 minutes pretending like your judge is actually enthralled by your discussion of nominal interest rates, no, no one cares about this. So you got to make it entertaining and interesting because otherwise your attention span losing judge is going to lose your attention and then your arguments aren't going to get interested. Secondly, guys, okay, look, hang on. I'm going to stop sharing for one second because we got to be honest. So guys, we're all debaters here, okay? We're all debaters here. We can be honest with each other here. We can be honest. I know that there's that whole no Google rule. We all know we've done it at some point. I'm not passing judgment. I've done it. In one round, two rounds in my life, I've Googled things beforehand. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to run like I haven't. But guys, ask yourself a genuine question. If not even freaking debaters can avoid using the internet during 15 minutes of prep time when you actually have something on the line, y'all don't think your judges who are like on their laptops couldn't also be like, oh, I'm flowing. Oh, no, I accidentally opened a Twitter tab. Oops. Oops. No, I'm like, I'm not saying that your judges are ignorant. I'm just saying that it's like human nature and humor keeps people engaged. And there's a really funny way to make people feel like things are entertaining. But third, guys, I love debate. Debate is one of the best things to ever happen to me. It is fun. It's engaging. It develops 
meaningfully informed civil citizens. It is a fantastic way of improving your oral advocacy skills. And it's a really stupid activity, not in a mean way. I love debate. It's fantastic. It's like 60% of the reason I'm going to college. Like 30% is like the food in the dining halls and like 10% is like ultimate Frisbee games on the like college green. But like debate, when you think about it, is kind of a really weird activity. And if you take it too seriously, like I'm not going to lie, guys, when like a uh, like five foot six person in like an overfitted suit jacket blazer stands up and gives like a booming rendition of give me liberty or give me death. Most people do actually cringe at that. And like debate is a really cool activity, but it's also a really weird activity. Like you spend hours just shouting at your screen into the ether about like sanctioning Russia, like really cool stuff. But like we can like a little bit make it more entertaining and fun. And that's going to be better for you. It's better for your judges. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying that you're going to win debates because you're funny, but I think that judges are more likely to engage with the stuff that you're telling them when you're funny. They're less likely to become bored by what you're saying, and they're just more likely to remember your speech. I have been judging, debating, or some combination of the two for many, many years out of the womb. In fact, I was a debater. The doctor tried to put me in like a bandage and I was like, no, that's made of rubber and rubber's bad for the environment. Ah! But the point is that like, even really like long-term debaters will remember very few speeches over the course of their career. And the things that they will remember are speeches that are memorable. Humor is how you do be memorable, bro. By the way, quick interjection, I am not very cool, but I like to pretend I'm cool by saying cool hip phrases such as hashtag, girl boss, slay queen. I also recently was introduced to the phrase slay king, which I believe has a similar meaning, but perhaps is more sarcastic. So anyways, so this is why humor in debate is a cool thing. There's a few quick rules of humor in debate before we get into like the main meat of this presentation. First, I hate to say it, but I'm going to say it. If you are not actually a person that you would think of as at least having some humorous gene inside of you, humor maybe is not the thing for you. And I don't say that in a mean way. I love my non-humorous friends. They're wonderful and amazing. But if you're not a person who actually can sell a joke and make it seem interesting, it's just really, really uncomfortable. And I'm not saying this in a mean way, guys. I promise I'm not. I'm just saying that there are people out there, and you guys know who you are, who like, you know, if you stood up and you and you had your paper with you and you were like, hi, judge, why did the chicken cross the road? Because Russia has recently invaded Ukraine and that requires sanctions. Like, it's just really awkward. And I love it. And I love the jokes and I love the attempt at humor. But if you ain't gonna be funny, then don't be funny because sometimes attempting to be funny when you are not a person who can sell the humor is just kind of awkward and leaves everyone doing that awkward joke, like laughing thing that everyone does when they hear a really bad joke and everyone just doesn't know how to respond. Second thing, sarcasm is the most commonly used form of Gen Z humor from my not so statistical observation. Now, sarcasm is fantastic, but you just need to make it clear when you're saying stuff sarcastically that you actually mean it sarcastically. So for example, if you're gonna make like a joke about how you like really like Jeff Bezos, like don't oversell <laughs> it, right? Like don't, don't do it too much, but like also don't do it like too under, right? Don't be like, like, you know, don't like say something boring. Like, like you know, do it enough in moderation that it's like, ha, 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 whatever. You, get, you guys get the gist. Um, other thing I'm just going to quickly say before I do the whole don't over explain your own joke thing is the whole brand of cringy humor. You guys know what I'm talking about, right? The like putting yourself out there and saying really awkward statements or whatever, or like deliberately making a huge amount of fun of yourself just because it's like cringy. Like, you know, it's really, I find that stuff hysterical. Like, I love that stuff. I think it is, I like adore it. But like, if you if you have a lot of really cringy humor in your speeches, there's a good chance it might maybe not go over fantastic. Third general piece of advice on using humor in debate: Don't over-explain your jokes. And and this is this is true for anyone. If there are like any aspiring stand-up comedians here, this Does this he is true for you as well. What was that? I'm not sure if there was a question there. If so, please repeat it. Otherwise, I'll pretend I didn't hear you. Um. Well, that's a lie. I did hear you. I just didn't hear what you said. So I guess we're both fine. Huh? You're on like a five second delay for me or maybe a six. Second. Okay. You know what? I'm just moving on. So the, 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 this is true for anyone who wants to do anything in, in comedy slash humor. But like, if you're going to say a joke, 
then like you you probably to some extent want to like you know say it but then don't like over explain it right like if you're gonna like this is one of my favorite lines that you can give in debate right when life gives you lemons make lemonade when life gives you yemen give yemen aid but if you keep on like make like being like ha see it was a joke it was really really funny right and if you keep on just explaining it aggressively aggressively and increasingly aggressively um it's just not going to work and your judge is going to be left kind of like sitting there like um huh like you know just be cautious of that okay uh the fourth thing i'd say in terms of general advice is read your judge uh and okay i'm not saying you should generalize people based on their age guys but if the person was alive in the time of the dinosaurs you should probably give different types of jokes than if that person is relatively young so what do i mean by that you guys know what i mean like if you're gonna go for like the gen z type humor right like you know moderate it depending on the audience that you happen to have i mean there's nothing wrong with gen z humor it, it's funny it's just that it doesn't register with everyone right so if you're gonna make like a bunch of like esoteric pop culture references be specific okay fifth piece of general advice before we get into like the main meat um of of like actual like how to be funny um just be cautious that your humor isn't mean like there's this kind of trend that a lot of people will sometimes do well they'll kind of do this thing where they're like ha ha my opponent's case is so bad it's as if they're incapable of reading ha <laughs> ha uh -huh. And like, that's not funny. That's just mean, you know? And if I'm a judge, I'm sitting there and I'm like, ooh, that one didn't, that one did not land. So don't use humor just as an excuse for being like a total jerk to other people. You know, you, you, you got to moderate it a little bit. Also related to that, I mean, I should hopefully not have to say this, but like, don't make, don't use humor in inappropriate um, situations, right? Like, you know, there's a time and a place for humor, right? Like if you're debating a thing about tax policy, yeah, lighten up the mood and be like, ha ha, but taxation is theft, right? Am I right? <laughs> <clears throat> Don't do that. That's really awkward and cringy. But like, if you're debating about, you know, like genocide, it, you know, like, I mean, like read the room, you know, like not a good thing to do. Um, so just be cautious when it comes to using humor and stuff like that. The other thing I'm going to say relating to this really quickly is that there are some topics which are just innately kind of mildly funny and in those instances i think leaning into humor is a fantastic thing so i once debated this motion that was like this house is mike pence in 2020 would go along with trump and try to steal the election or whatever and like okay like yeah it's like a serious topic but like there's kind of an element of like oh my god we're mike freaking pence right so like if you like i i, I ended my speech with like hashtag vote gov like it's kind of fun like you know kind of like have some have some fun with it but like you know don't do anything like crazy because if you just been crazy then judges are going to be like whoa that's that's totally uncool man okay uh let me let me screen share again ryan ryan sometimes i say ryan to myself and i want to remind myself what my name is okay a few places that are good to insert humor into debate that i'm going to highlight and then we're going to talk about how you actually use humor uh introductions i think introductions are a fantastic place to use humor like i think that it's the best place where you can insert like little sneaky sneaky statements that are kind of funny how do you do this well i think for one thing what you can almost always do is you can kind of a little bit use humor as an exaggerative tool so like one of my favorite things to use humor for is like a lot of debaters will do this thing well they'll will they'll be like okay guys here's a motion and then they'll point to this like massive ass problem and they'll be like we solved this we like totally solve every war ever or my favorite example of this is like the climate change stuff right where the motion will be like this house would ban uber and then the gov, like gov will be like guys if we ban uber there will be fewer cars on the road and fewer cars on the road equals fewer emissions equals fewer koalas dying judge do you want to kill the koalas and that's a bad argument and you can respond to it in like a nerdy way and be like judge i have three responses first this is not the tipping point but and that's boring but it's like way more funny if you're just like judge this all this government team believes that the solution to centuries of systematic economic and environmental degradation of the planet is to ban a single ride sharing service right like you don't have to make fun of them but you can like certainly like meme the argument a little bit right so whenever you hear those arguments that you're like wait a second buddy hang on hold up slow down flag on the play time out what sometimes that's a kind of cool thing where you can like be like a little bit like look, this is clearly not realistically what's going to happen. The second thing relating to that, I'd say, is that 
humor is a great way of flagging contradictions. And I think that sometimes the funniest way to point out contradictions is to never actually say they're a contradiction, but to be like, so for example, I once judged a debate that was like, this house regrets the significant rise of retail investing. Really boring topic. Retail investing is like Wall Street, like whatever. What the hell is that? Uh, Wall Street bets? Yeah, that thing, right? And, and, um, and, and, and Op has this baffling argument that's like, we should have more uh, retail investing because retail investing is bad, but when lots of people do it, it becomes better. Like we get like whatever, like government regulations or whatever. And like, it's like, it would be like a totally cool thing to start a speech by being like, the motion is this house regrets the rise of retail investing. Op supports the rise of retail investing. And the big argument Op gives for why the rise of retail investing is good is that retail investing is bad, right? Like you can sometimes just use humor in that kind of way to be like, hang on, something ain't clicking here. So TLDR, first place I think is really great to use humor is in the context of introducing speeches. Um, so like giving like kind of a, you know, fun joke can be kind of nice. Um, and also framing how the round should be evaluated, et cetera. The other thing I'm going to say relating to this is that it's very often the case that you can use humor really effectively as a gut check. And what I mean by that is this. Um, a lot of motions follow this pattern. This house supports or this house would do a really crazy thing, OK? Like, a lot of debaters will try to debate it as if it's not like a really crazy thing. Like, there was a motion recently at a tournament that was like, this house supports the rise of services that allow you to rent a girlfriend. And that's like actually crazy. But like, if you're debating it, a bunch of gov teams would stand up and they'd be like, all right, your honor, here we go. We're going to give you like three, like, and that's fine. You can give arguments and you have to, but it's not a bad thing to like be honest at the beginning of speeches and be like, gut check. This is really, really crazy. Obviously, that's why it's not going to be used a lot. Obviously, that's why there's going to be a bevy of regulation around it. And obviously, that's why this is going to be only used in very extreme instances where it's desperately needed. So like, sometimes you can use humor and be like, honest, like, judge, this is actually totally wackily crazily do. And this is like, actually, like, bonkers wild. And that's totally fine, because it humanizes you. The other place I think you can use humor very effectively is in answering POIs. So like, a lot of POIs will kind of be like, hey, blah, 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 insert crazy statement here. Or not crazy, but like kind of like a little bit out there. Like in that instance, like respond to the POI and like you can like a little bit have like something of like a jokey type response. Like I think it's kind of fun to like, to be clear, you're, the goal isn't to, isn't to attack the argument or the person. The goal is like you can kind of have some fun and like have a funny-ish answer and stuff like that. The last place I think humor goes really, really well in, and this is kind of odd, but I think that it can be really, really useful to use like humorous examples. Like if you can, for example, like kind of just like use funny language, if you're going to like exemplify an argument, I think that can be quite fun. So for example, um, I debated like a topic a while back that was like, this house would require that companies hire a large number of people without uh, a university diploma throughout all levels of their corporate structure. And one of the arguments I was making was that this will make uh, jobs that are traditionally seen as blue collar work or jobs that are traditionally filled by lesser educated individuals better, because what this policy will do is yank out a bunch of like cranky, like white people from like rich corporate positions, and they'll have to start working those jobs. And if there's one thing that gets the like the quality of jobs to get a lot better, it's to stuff a bunch of like angry, irritable Karens into them, into those positions, because then they're just going to like eventually use their social and political capital to make change. So like sometimes using examples in like a kind of funny way can be kind of a, a cool thing to do and, and make rounds vaguely entertaining. So, you know, I definitely think you should do it because it's lots of fun and hooray, hurrah. Okay. So that's where I think inserting humor can be very effective. Introductions, highlighting contradictions, uh, like responding to obviously nonsensical arguments or very, very unlikely to be true arguments and exemplifying arguments that could kind of have some like useful humor being integrated into them. Beyond that, obviously, I just think having like fun turns of phrase is cool, right? Like I think that, you know, you can like just have fun analogies. So for example, like I once did a debate that was like this house, it was like something, 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 send your kid to boarding school. And we were like pro boarding school. And Op's whole case is like, ah, but boarding school, you're away from your parents. And we were like, boarding school isn't as caban. <laughs> and I swear you not, the judge actually spent like five minutes being like, you know, Ryan, that was a great 
statement that you said. You're right. This isn't as good. And I was like, sir, I came up with that on the fly and thought that was a stupid analogy. He loved it. So if you're that judge out there, I really appreciate that. That 27 and a half was really nice. It boosted my mood. And I'm, you're welcome for saying ask again. So that's where you can insert humor. Okay, the last thing we're going to chat about then is like, how do you actually uh, like come up with funny things? This is where I will refer you back to the prior slide, which is that if you're not a person that's like actually, I'm not saying this to be mean. I'm not saying this to be mean. I'm not attacking you. I love it when people aren't funny. That's totally perfect. There's nothing wrong with that. But like, if you're not like a person who's like genuinely funny, you know, it's like, it's kind of like having a friend who says they're really, they really like baking, but they're, they really never bake. And then like one time the friend group is like, Hey, we should do a picnic and you can bake for us. And then you show up there and they've got like a bunch of like half cooked croissants that are still like gooey on the inside. And you're like, Oh, you don't know what an egg is, do you? So like, you know, if you're not actually into humor, it's probably best to avoid using it. But to the extent that you have some humorous inclination within you, there's a couple of jokes I think can be like fairly good to deploy. Um, the first thing is I think that it can be very funny to take uh, like well-known popular culture references things and like whether that's characters or phrases or statements or whatever and kind of twist them. So like the lemon, uh, like the when life gives you lemon thing from earlier. Uh, one of my other favorite things is like uh, anyone in my group, I, I told this to you earlier, but like if you ever debate like eco-terrorism, I always introduce like the pro-eco-terrorism side by being like, as the Lorax very famously once said, I am the Lorax, I speak for the trees. If you pollute the environment, then I'll break your effing knees. You know, maybe you don't need to say that, but like, it's kind of vaguely funny because it's like, oof, oof. And then it's kind of mildly entertaining. Um, so like, I think that you can oftentimes kind of like reference like popular culture-y things um, in kind of like a, you know, fairly fun or entertaining way. Like I once did like, okay, this is like a little bit me. This is like probably too far. In like a practice round I once did, um, the, the, like I was giving an MO and there was like a big contradiction in the Gov case. And so I opened my MO with like, you know, this past weekend I started watching the latest season of MasterChef. And uh, in the episode, they were given a task of like, chopping up some some really tough sirloin steak and they had to pull out these massive knives to cut it and yet somehow the biggest knife comes in the mg speech when they totally knife all the arguments that pm gave you okay don't say that because that's like a little bit mean and across the line but you got like you can kind of like you know like make some funny comments here or there um the last thing is i think that honestly and i know this is going to sound weird but i actually genuinely think that it's not a bad thing to spend like a minute towards like the end of prep or this is what I always have to do when the judge is doing introductions you guys know the drill hi how are you guys who's on who's on site gov who's on site uh, who's gonna be speaking when when judges are doing that whole spiel I think that's a fantastic time to like ask yourself like oh is there a funny joke I could integrate in somewhere here or there or whatever like I think it can be quite fun um because like you kind of have like a minute or two of extra time and there's no real expectations of you and you can kind of do whatever the hell you want. So, you know, you can kind of use that time for that. Like, I think you can plan, you know, joke stuff out in advance and, and stuff like that. Um, the last thing I'm going to say in terms of, and I didn't put this in the slides, I apologize. Um, but I think that one of the like very fun things that you can do when you're trying to be funny is like, even if you're not saying innately funny things, you can kind of just use like public speaking -y things in a funny way, right? So for example, uh, and this doesn't work virtually, this works better in person, but like, Sometimes you can do a thing, which is when you're responding to arguments, you can be like, if if like an argument kind of intuitively sounds difficult to believe, you can be like, then the opposition's next argument is, and then you say the argument, and then you like pause for like two seconds, and you were like, okay, and then you like go into your reputations. Sometimes just like small random stuff like that can kind of be kind of funny. Like it can be kind of funny if you just like pause and are like, like look confused and stuff like that. Like speeches are performative and I know that no one likes to think of that because we're all like ah arguments arguments are and don't get me wrong I love arguments like they're fantastic but you know pausing every now and then and like doing comedic things can be vaguely entertaining and I think that you should you, you should do that I once had an uh the op team said we believe that it is guilty until proven innocent um wow beautiful um oh my god Santa debates are so much fun you know oh wow I can do so much with Santa debates Wow, that would just be comedic gold. Anyways, okay. The last thing I'm going to quickly give you guys an intro to is how to make memes. This has nothing to do with debate. I'm sorry. Um, but you should all know how to do it. Okay, everyone, this is very important. So you should 
you know, definitely do it. Okay, imageflip.com is the best place to make memes. You can do power, uh, you can do, uh, you can do, uh, what the hell is it called? Uh, 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 Photoshop, Photoshop. I hate Photoshop. I find it annoying, but you can do whatever, whatever you want. Google drawings. I mean, sure, you know, you, you do you, but anyways. Okay, I think that you, I think image flip is the best. Um, I think it's a lot of fun. Their drawing feature is horrible, but you can do whatever. A couple of quick things I want to say. Zach, are you on this call? Is Zach here? I don't think so. I, I don't think Zach is. If Zach is here, then okay. Zach, when you watch this, there's a section that's devoted specifically for you. I love you, Zach, but your meme game is a little bit off. Sorry, Zach. It's not personal. I'm just trying to help, you know? Anyways, a few things I'd say in terms of meme advice. Uh, so the most commonly gotten wrong memes, if you ever use this meme template, you need to say this is like a, a good thing and this is a bad thing, but then you need to like actually like write like little descriptions below them. Um. Oh, the most commonly... Uh, wrongly used meme. Does anyone know what this meme template is supposed to do in the bottom two templates or bottom two frames? Yeah, it's supposed to be the same thing. And I know it's like, I, I'm I'm coming across like I'm like a stickler for like memes have to be done a certain way, but you know, I'm a meme prescriptivist. Um, the, 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 the other like thing that you can oftentimes do to make funny memes is just search like random words. You see, you see what I mean? Like just search random words and then you'll get like funny templates that you can kind of use in, in some way. Um, you know, so that's kind of a fun way to make memes. Yeah, very, very cool. Um, oh yeah, I'll send the, I'll send the, I'll send the link. This is, this is, I think the best place to make memes. It's very fun. There you go. Boom. Waddle do. Okay. So, um, the last thing I'll chat about very quickly, and then we'll do questions is kind of the, like, uh, like how do you uh, like integrate humor more directly? I think that the probably biggest thing I'd say um, is just that like you can kind of think about where in your speech humor would be best served. So for example, if you're about to give like, you know, like six reasons for something being true, it's probably good at some point in there to like, you know, sp you know, like add a mildly funny line in, like that can be kind of a good thing to do just because your attend your audience is otherwise going to be like really, really freaking bored. Um, and I think the other thing to do is that like, Using humor um, when you are like impacting arguments can oftentimes be quite useful as well, uh, just because it's, it's often easier for judges to remember an impact when there is something memorable attached to it. Last thing, to be clear, you don't need to be funny to win debates. It's just that like if laughter is the best medicine, then like most debaters are like vicious anti-vaxxers because 90% of people will never even try to touch humor in their speeches. So even if you just lightly use humor, it can be really fun and it can be a good thing. And, you know, that's kind of my TLDR. Okay. So now that you have all uh, heard a lot of random Ryan rambling, RRR, I call it the triple R. You can buy it from me for the cost of $0 and get a lot of them, triple R's. Um, questions, because I'm sure people have questions on meme making, joke making, being funny in debate, and or all of the above. Oh, by the way, I'm not saying that I'm like a funny person innately. I'm just giving advice. You probably don't have to find my, my, my humor. Some people find it very grating. Like I love jokes about like pretending to be a CIA officer, but I'm really worried that people actually think I'm a CIA officer now. And I'm not, I promise. Or am I? Anyways. Questions that folks have or like stories that are worth being shared. I don't know. I mean, we're kind of just chilling dudes. Yeah, Elliot. What's your opinion on impact font? Um, it's fine for memes. Um, like it's fine. Like, yeah. I mean, I that's like generally what I like to that's like generally what I like to go. I mean, I, it's the default. It's fine. Like, I mean, you can change it up, like, you know. It's kind of whatever the vibe calls for. Like sometimes you'll want like a very formal looking type type font, in which case you probably want to go for something more actually formal. Um, but for most of the time, impact is fine. Yeah, that's a boring answer. I wish I could have made that funny, but you know. Roses are red, ballots are blue. I speak my mind and that is true. Um, other other questions on on being humorous in debate. Wow, everyone's just like so I bet everyone's laughing right now. They're just like falling over on the ground, rolling with laughter. They're like, ah, the real oh, I, kind of have, I kind of have a question. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So as like a white man, how do you avoid being super offensive, like in your humor? Oh, yes. Um. So I think that it, it's a very good question. And the, the honest answer is that you never should make jokes about things that should ever be offensive. Right. Hang on. Hang on. Okay. 
to answer the question though, the honest answer is two things. Um, like not neither of these are funny because like this is a good question. But the first thing is that you always actually need to be like kind in debate. Uh, like I've recently shifted very heavily on this to the sense of like you should never actually make a joke that could potentially make someone um like actually feel hurt or in any way offended. I I honestly think that debate is a much much more enjoyable place when you never make jokes that even have the potentiality of making someone feel hurt. And it's not just jokes, like it should be anything, like any statement that you make should not be something that like ever attacks someone or even their argument, right? Like I think it's fine to be like, this obviously is not going to fix climate change, but don't be like, ha ha, this argument is total like BS or whatever. Um, I think the second thing I'd say though, is just that like, you always wanna be like, like debate is an activity where like, the demographics that are represented is very non-representative of society writ large, which is to say it's overwhelmingly like dominated by relatively privileged groups. So to that extent, you like always want to be debating as if there was a member from a marginalized group in the room, even if they actually aren't. So mm -hmm. if you're going to make like jokes in rounds where relatively tough issues are being discussed, like you you want to approach those issues like with I didn't the corner. What was that? I'm gonna mute. I think you don't know you're unmuted is my guess. But like the gist is like you want you want to debate topics sensitively, not because it's like a oh, like you need to like you can't make jokes about this, but it's because like jokes are very powerful, but also like if you use humor inappropriately, you are actually just an asshole and you actually will offend people and hurt their feelings very really. So it's always, I think, a good just thing in general to be like aware that like making jokes in bad taste and about subjects that shouldn't be made fun of is just a really, really it's not a bad debate thing to do. It's a bad human being thing to do. Um, so don't do it. Uh, related to that, I think you always like in general, like I think that the goal of kind of making funny like statements or like using humor effectively is to like make your debating independently better, not to ever degrade anyone or anything else, right? So like, obviously the, the, the point is like, don't make jokes or don't say funny things that are like, don't use humor just as a masking tool to like, make it seem like you're not being racist or make it not seem like you're being sexist. I.e. like you want to like actually be cognizant of how that humor could be understood. The last thing relating to that, I think in general, is just that you want to use humor in relatively non-substantive ways when it comes to debates that have like anything that's even vaguely not funny. What I mean by that is like you never want to make arguments about, for example, how a group of people might react to something that isn't like, um, entirely based off of a humorous but likely offensive characterization um in general like i think it's fine if you want to make fun of bill gates like i don't think that anyone's gonna like be very upset if you're like uh yeah haha ha, bill gates is like a bad human being but like just be cautious that that's not true for everyone because not everyone has the privilege that bill gates has etc so tldr long story short like be a good human being debate is a much more fun space when people like you know are good human beings to each other. So, you know, it's it's just something to be kind of generally aware of. Um, and I think in general, like just kind of err on the side of caution um, and like grow and like learn as a human being. Does that kind of like somewhat make sense, Jenny? Yeah, it does. I just follow up. Could you like send that information to every team in the NYPDL as a PSA I, for next year? I would greatly appreciate that. Yeah. Um, oh, I also, okay. How should I say? Yeah, I'm just, okay. I honestly do think that if you are white or if you are a man, you like seriously actually genuinely need to like just like watch the fuck out, you know, when you're like debating, like just like be cautious, you know, like not not because it's like a selfish thing, but just like be a good human being, you know, like debate is like like I've won rounds definitely because I'm a white male, like for sure, like 100%. And like that's th that's a bad thing for the debate world in general. And so like as a debater, you want to be a good human being. So like do good things, help other people out, be cognizant of how you're acting and how you're also not acting. Um, this is also a general piece of advice too. As a lot of debate stuff goes back in person, um, oftentimes a lot of people don't realize they're excluding others because it's like very tacit forms of exclusion. It's like, oh, like I'm not like physically like, you know, whatever, like talking with you or like in the same proximity as you. So be cautious of that. Like don't be like, you know, a person who excludes others because humor is only funny if everyone enjoys it and if people can't enjoy it then it ain't funny so you know like just be a good human being um debate is like like a okay i i say this again in a non-mean way but like you guys do know the debate is kind of like a like weirdly odd activity there's no reason that you need to treat it like it's like the like the freaking olympics i mean i think it's kind of the olympics but you know that's just me 
I haven't gotten a gold medal yet, but if I do, I'll tell you. But like treat other people well, because there's literally zero good reason to not treat other people nicely and just be like a good person. Yeah, that's my PSA for, for people is like, be a good human being, hooray, hurrah. Um, and be helpful to people that do not look like you or don't speak the same way as you, et cetera. Oh, also relating to that, obviously, is like, I think you can also use humor wholesomely, right? Like I personally think it is a really good thing for experienced debaters. Um, and, and this isn't a humorous thing, but like, I think it's a really good thing for experienced debaters to be like very kind in rounds to clearly newer debaters. Like if you've been debating for multiple years and like your opponent struggles to fill time, do not pound their arguments. Like be nice, like compliment them. It's a good thing to do. Be the be the on like the right side of things. Um, but also you can use humor in like wholesome ways, right? Like, you know, you can be like, this has been a, well, like, this isn't a humorous thing to say, but like, this has been like a great round. Like this has been super fantastic. That sort of thing. Don't be like the like obnoxious, like, oh my God, judge, you're like the best human being ever. OMG, I love you so much. Oh my God. Can I, can I put a ring on your face? Do you want to get married this weekend? Oh my God. I would love nothing more than to live with you for the rest of eternity ever. Like you don't need to do that. But, you know, you also can like, you know, like be a nice human being if you, if you got my vibe. Like, I think it's a good thing to do. So yeah, hopefully that made sense vaguely. Uh, uh, sorry for the rant, just my personal opinion. So my personal opinion has been opinionated in an opinion section of a Zoom call. Anyways, other questions that folks want to run by in terms of like being funny, using humor, et cetera, et cetera. Also, you can ask me for meme advice because I have a lot of meme opinions. Wow, everyone has no meme meme questions. Um, in case you want to know, uh, I think r slash dank memes has fine memes. Um, there's a lot of like ones that are like, eh, I don't know, like they kind of like miss, you know, like not great. I think Parks and Recreation is a very good show because it's funny. Um, and you will learn lots of good humor from it. Um, so that's a good place to go to learn about humor. Yeah, honestly, that's probably like the, the best two places to, to pick up good humor stuff. Also, you can, I've never watched SNL. I don't know if SNL is good, but like, I assume it's good. So like, you know, you could do SNL, I suppose. Yeah, Vaco. This is a kind of a weird question maybe, but do you think like your ability to deploy humor in rounds, talking specifically about like when you were still debating in NYPDL, like your ability to deploy humor in rounds and like still win those rounds. Do you think that like your success with that increased as their kind of like credibility in the league increased? Or do you think like, like, do you think that your humor was like genuinely helping you? Or do you think it was just kind of like something that was like entertaining for the most part, like for yourself or then like your team and sometimes the opponents? Yeah. I mean, admittedly, I'll be honest that I think that like, I admittedly, I like have I don't use humor as much as I like might seem like I do in speeches. Um, and there's like some instances in which I have like, um, for example, if you watch like some of the final rounds from last year's NYPDL, I had like random like one off liners that I thought were quite funny. Like the there's like a round of some there was like some weird topic about like love or something. And I was like, haha, I love my brother, but I'm not from Alabama or some weird thing. Anyways, um, I, I mean, like, I think being funny is is cool, um, but like, I don't think it's a good thing to just use humor as like an instrument to like accomplish, to like get social clout. Um, it's also recently only been made clear to me that apparently people find my 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 humor like a widespread thing in the NYPDL. So if you want, you can go to the NYPDL server and read all my old poems. They're very cringy, but funny, so. If I if I say so myself, some of them are not funny, but you can read them if you want. I think they're mildly entertaining. Um. So, anyways, to like long story short, answer your question. I I don't think probably being funny was like attributable directly to most of my debate success. Um. It's mostly because I'm a nerd and I spend too much time doing debate, and I also benefit from a lot of privilege, which is a bad thing for the debate community. Um. And that's not a good thing. So we need to fix that, which is not a funny thing, but a good thing to be thinking about. Uh. That was not at all an answer to your question, though. What would you that answer at all, Vaco? Like at all? It was. And my question was also like more curiosity than just like seeking advice. Also, I like just want to hear your opinion or like your experience. Interesting. I see. I see. I see. Excellent. Okay, folks. Other questions? I think technically this was supposed to end at what? 250? I don't know. Time is a social construct, anyways. Um, that's what I tell my judges when I try to go over time and they don't believe me. Um, any other questions that folks want to ask? Um, if not, I'll pause the recording. Bye, SNL. Please accept me.